Hi, students, and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian, and I am streaming to you live from beautiful Budapest here in Hungary, in Central Europe. I hope everybody has had a great week and looking forward to a fantastic weekend full of experience and happiness. Hi, satisfying times. Welcome to the class and the chat. Today we are focusing on speaking part three, the detailed questions on a specific topic following part two. And this lesson is brought to you by our world-class IELTS preparation websites, aehelp.com for academic IELTS. I'll put that URL up here so you can check it out anytime in the lesson. The general version of the class, check us out at G-I-E-L-T-S help.com. On both of those websites, we have six original practice tests, over 100 hours of video lessons, computer-based practice tests as well, and we have strategies in a fully interactive course. Hi, Shang Hung, good to see you in this class. It is a continuation of our last class, so that's good for you. Mohammed Pachu Onur, good to see many students in on time. Our websites look like this. This is the academic with the blue background at aehelp.com. Click that red button to join our premium package. And for the general version, same concept, green background, of course, different materials for the reading and writing sections, and click that red button to join us there. Get our app, Academic IELTS Help, from your app store. Look for our logo, search for Academic IELTS Help in your Google Play or Apple App Stores. And uh, if you have questions, comments, concerns about the exam, about our products, we are here to help you. Our goal is to help you succeed in your goals, in your studies and immigration. That makes us super happy when students tell us that, hey, I got a band seven, band eight. I'm now living in Australia or I got a band eight and now I'm continuing my master's studies in university. That makes us feel happy full of energy and life. That's what drives us. My email, adrian, A-D-R-I-A-N, at aehelp.com. This is our last class for this week. Uh, no class on Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, and I will be back on Tuesday, uh, the 8th of October. So that's next Tuesday. I'll be back with speaking part one. You can check our schedule in the videos or on our YouTube channel community board. Now for part three, questions. So uh, we just did a part two class talking about um, a useful item or an item that you take with you when you leave home. And uh, in the IELTS speaking, there are three parts. Each part gets a little bit more difficult, and they're a little bit different. Part one, some general questions uh, concerning you. Uh, so your hobbies, about music you like, games you like to play, your favorite food. That, those are the part one kind of questions. Part two, it's a cue card. We just did a lesson uh, half an hour ago. We finished about um, cue card, uh, talk about an item that you often take with you when you leave home. And that was a members chat class. And of course, our members know that we're in that class that we talked about a water bottle. So taking our water bottle with us wherever we go. Now, when you're finished part two, then the examiner will say, that is the end of part two. I will take back the card with the questions, the note paper, and now we will continue with part three. For part three, I'm going to ask you some more questions related to the topic of part two. As soon as you hear that, students, what should you remember to do? What's an important point that can get you a half an extra band score? So how can you get yourself that 
extra half man score if you remember this. So when the examiner says, now I will ask you some questions related to the topic of part two. They literally say that right before uh, they say, let's talk about useful possessions. So what should you remember to do to get that extra half band score? So as soon as you hear this statement from the examiner, you must remember to do what? <laughs> Part three begins. <laughs> Beck says, try to remember what you said in part two. Absolutely, Beck. Oh, love, I agree. You should remember that. And uh, part three, yes, it will begin, but you need to remember uh, something else. So Pachu says, connect the topics. Okay. Yes, Pachu, you're on the right track. Uh, Shang Hung says, remember to answer, explain example. Shang Hung, you got to remember that before before you walk in uh, to the speaking interview, because that you hopefully remembered for part one as well, Shang Hung, not just for part three, okay? Um, you should remember to connect your part three responses to your part two speaking when possible, okay? <clears throat> so if possible, if you remember what you said in part two, and you should, then you should make a connection between your part two response and your part three response. That will help you improve your cohesion, okay? It's how all of your ideas are connected together. So it will help you to improve your cohesion and your band score will go up. Okay, answer, explain, example is important. And uh, Ashwath Sai Apala is also saying another important point to remember that you have to be precise. And you're absolutely right, Ashwath. I think you saw our class the other day and you remembered this important point. So let's put it up there. And be precise. Don't just say general ideas. Or maybe you saw the new video, Ashwath, that we loaded onto the channel with that band nine candidate from India. Very good. So be precise. Okay, so let's do this. Let's get into it. This is a speaking class. So speak and repeat. It's great that you're writing and you're chatting, but make sure to speak and repeat what I say. Repeat the questions and the answers. So let's talk about useful possessions. Possessions are objects that you have or that you own. Here we go. What are some useful items that people often carry with them in their pockets? So what are some useful items that people often carry with them in their pockets? Satisfying Time says individuals usually carry with them what they need during their day, such as a wallet, which contains credit cards, and a bus pass. Satisfying Time's nice, complex sentence with good reasoning, objects people need during their day. It's good. Sid, who says there are many items which individuals take whenever they go outside from home, like a water bottle which they have mentioned in the topic, but other things as well as a wallet and mobile phone. Ooh, Sidhu, careful, careful. This was a bit of a tricky question. Um, you usually don't put a water bottle in your pocket. This is your pocket that we're talking about. Pocket, uh, do I have one? Not on this shirt, but your pocket in your pants, right? So mobile phone and wallet are good but money is good, but you need to give me a full sentence answer. Sudhanshu Sharma says people usually carry wallet and mobile phone in their pocket, 
which they use for communication and purchases in their daily activities. Absolutely. Okay. So students, again, take the advice of your classmates. Answer, explain, example. Okay. So <clears throat> the most common objects that individuals have in their pockets, which are of utility in their daily activities, are money for purchases, mobile phone for communication and information, as well as keys to gain access to certain places. These are the items that I have in my pockets right now. <laughs> okay, although you might not be allowed a mobile phone in the room, but um, anyway, uh, that is a band nine answer. Okay, so we're shooting for those band nine answers. Answer, explain, example. Complex language, you have to use complex language. You have to give details, you have to be accurate. So notice students that the question includes some very important words, useful, okay? So useful items, objects, people carry with them in their pockets. So useful items in their pockets. Very importantly, this is an S. So if you just say people have mobile phones, band 6.5, no more, because this is a plural. You have to show the examiner that you realize that they didn't just ask you what is a useful item, okay? So this is what are some useful items, not what is a useful item. This is a different question, okay? It's asking for one item. This is asking for multiple items. So careful paying attention to plurals and singulars in the question, okay? All right, there's some other good answers coming up. Uh, let's see, Abdul Bori says, generally individuals carry their significant belongings in their pockets, including money, and mobile phones to make purchases and communicate with others, right? Hubble Bori, very good. Um, JS Kiva says, well, there are several pocket items that almost all people carry, such as a handkerchief to blow their nose, a wallet with identification and money for purchases, a pen for writing down information, and maybe a mobile phone for communication. Right, Kiva, throw in those extra little details and your band score is going boop, 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 and through the roof and you're getting a nine. All right, some nice answers, some nice answers. Again, repeat after me one more time here, students. So remember what I said in previous classes, practice questions, not just answers. Here we go. What are some useful items that people often carry with them in their pockets. The most common object that individuals have in their pockets, which are of utility in their daily activities are money for purchases, mobile phone for communication and information, as well as keys to gain access to certain places. These are the items that I have in my pockets right now, kind of bringing it in to a sense of reality. Then in part three, you'll notice that the examiner will ask you a follow-up question, okay? So, um, are there any useless things that people often carry around? So, are there any useless things that people often carry around? Now, notice how this one doesn't say pockets. 
So if you say something that's not in your pocket necessarily, that could be okay. Or maybe it is something in your pocket that doesn't have utility. Okay. So are there any useless items that people often carry around with them? Let's see some answers for this one. Zaid says, yes, there are some address cards. Uh, Zaid, maybe I think you're thinking of business cards or name cards as another way. Address cards, we don't really uh, use that word. So business cards or name cards, okay? Jen, Deborah says, I think sometimes people carry uh, too many coins, although they always use their debit or credit card. One example is me. I always carry way too much change in my pocket. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Pavan says, sure, use tickets. Very good. So there are some good answers. Pavan, give me a full sentence answer. Yes, people often will have used uh, transit tickets in their pockets that they neglect to throw away and they carry them around for months. In fact, I think I have two punched bus tickets in my pocket right now. Okay, that's a good one, Pavan. I like it. Hadi Beck says, uh, people take a wallet in their pocket. However, without money and identification cards, there are many useless items like pictures, or business cards, uh, broken watches that don't work in their pockets. Okay, all right, Haiti, just careful not to uh, get lost. Those are some good answers as well. Situ Muswala Group says, yes, there are many items which people uh, carry but are useless, like uh, money when they have a credit card, and they can use it anywhere to buy items and services. Okay, try to uh, stay away, Sidhu, from the word thing. Okay, don't use the word thing. Amar Wadi says, well, some people carry around a lot of objects which are not handy, like umbrellas and newspapers on sunny days. Okay, <laughs> sure. Okay. Possibly, Amar. Umbrella could be useful if it's going to rain, so you might want to explain that it's a sunny day. Okay, so, um, yes, there are definitely some objects that people have on their person which do not really serve any purpose, such as used bus tickets and tissue paper that they should have thrown away but have neglected To do so. Also, many people carry around name cards that they accepted out of courtesy, but never really plan to use. Okay. All right. So I took a couple of your answers and I combined them. This is a bit of a long answer. Or perhaps we can even say it's two answers in one. Uh, just repeat after me. It's for practice. It's complex grammar. So are there any useless things that people often carry around? Here we go. Yes, there are definitely some objects that people have on their person. Have on their person means that you have it with you, okay? This is an expression, it's not an idiom, it's an expression uh, that is commonly used by native speakers. What do you have on your person? It means what do you have with you, 
okay? So that people have on their person which do not really serve any purpose. To serve a purpose. To serve a purpose means to have utility or usefulness. I'm emphasizing these students because I want you to write them down if they're new for you, okay? Uh, such as used bus tickets and tissue paper. Ew, gross. Uh, that they should have thrown away. Should have thrown away, okay? Uh, it's a present perfect modal, okay? Should have thrown away, but have neglected Neglected means to ignore or not do. Neglected to do so. Also, many people carry around name cards that they accepted out of courtesy. Look at this one. Accepted out of courtesy. So it means you took it from the person because you didn't want to seem rude. You didn't want to be like, oh, I don't need your business card. I got a mobile phone. I'll never use that. Say, oh, thank you for the business card. In the pocket it goes. And there it stays until you wash your pants. Okay, um, but never really plan to use. So let's do this one more time, nice and fluently, okay? Yes, there are definitely some objects that people have on their persons which do not really serve any purpose, such as used bus tickets and tissue paper that they should have thrown away, but have neglected to do so. Also, many people carry around name cards that they accepted out of courtesy, but never really plan to use. Okay. All right. Chakrani, you write down the answers. That's great. Next question coming up. How have items that people consider useful to have on their person? Oh, look at that. Um, so how have items that people consider useful to have on their person changed from a generation before? So give me a nice full sentence answer to this question. Notice that this is a present perfect question. So you must answer in present perfect. Okay. Nora, you're very welcome. Thank you for the feedback. So, um, Sid, who is saying, I'm having difficulty understanding this question. Can I paraphrase it? I can paraphrase this question, but in the exam, they will not paraphrase it. Okay. So it means, uh, what items do people carry with them these days that they think is useful, that has utility, that's different than what our parents or our grandparents carried with them? So now compared to a generation before. So Hadi Ibek, yeah, sorry, Hadi Ipek says it has changed due to the development of technology. Earlier people wore watches to check the time, wore wrist watches to check the time. However, nowadays uh, people do this with their mobile phones. Hadi, very quick, nice thinking. Saima Imran says, yes, definitely it has changed a lot. Not passive, Saima, but active. Yes, definitely it has changed a lot. A lot is two words, a lot, okay? Yes, definitely it has changed a lot. When we used to go out before, we used hankies, but now we use tissue paper and hand sanitizers. Uh, this might change in the future again. Yeah. Okay. Some good answers there. I'll look at some other students that I haven't looked at before. Uh, Pachu says, yes, the items which are useful to carry with people uh, these days have changed from previous generations due to changes in technology. Uh, people are taking objects... Um, which they can use to access the internet, like mobile phones, a laptop, or a tablet. Uh, however, in the past, people uh, took books. Okay, but you, I think you misunderstood that question, so I changed your answer to be correct. Okay. All right, Jeannie Deber says, in the past, people used to think 
that a cash and pen are helpful to carry with them. However, now, since technology has changed life a lot, we carry credit cards in a mobile phone. Very good. So some really good answers for this. Um, absolutely. There have been uh, many changes in the personal belongings that people feel are useful now as opposed to 30 years back. At that time, Most people carried around cash and pen and paper, but nowadays this has been replaced by credit cards and mobile phones. All right, nice answer, students. How have items that people consider useful to have on their persons changed from a generation before? Absolutely, there have been many changes in the personal belongings uh, that people feel are useful now as opposed to 30 years back. At that time, most people carried around cash and pen and paper, but nowadays, this has been replaced by credit cards and mobile phones. Just a couple of quick corrections. Let's rotate the I and the R there. Let's fix that S. And there is another mistake in my response. What is it? Can anybody spot my mistake? I need one more fix here. What is it? Okay, it's really important to proofread, think about your mistakes and fix them, all right? It's one part of study that a lot of students miss is they don't proofread, they don't listen back to their answers, they don't correct and they make the same mistakes over and over again. A lot of you are saying and, and, no, it's okay, in speech that's fine. So, carried around cash and pen and paper. Uh, that's okay because we say pen and paper, okay? I might put a comma here, but that's not my big mistake. There's a bigger mistake than that, okay? Spot my mistake, and I'll give you my super thumbs up. What is it? Um, Shakrani, yes, you got a part of it. So Nima Tula Shakrani says, I think there's a plural singular uh, yeah, exactly. Very good, Shahrani. These have. Yeah, very good. Okay. Very good. So, singular. This is a plural. Shahrani, you get my whoosh, super thumbs up. Awesome. You spotted that singular plural mistake. So, these have been replaced because we're replacing multiple items. Okay. Um, absolutely, your examiner will catch that. Okay, so these have been replaced by credit cards and mobile phones. All right, uh, let's go to the next one. The follow-up question, okay, again, so there are follow-up questions to questions. Uh, will there be changes in the future as well? Okay, so good job for spotting the plurals. Um, will there be changes in the future as well? Diana, you're very welcome. Thank you for the feedback. Satisfying Times says, undoubtedly it will. Very nice use of the word undoubtedly. Uh, undoubtedly it will. With the rapid technological advancement, we can expect extraordinary do-it-all gadgets which can be implanted 
into our brains to give us full remote access to our houses instantly. Wow, that is very imaginative. Um, satisfying times, possibly. It's a good answer. It's not implemented, it's implanted, implanted. Think about plant, like you're, you know, you have a plant, like a rose, um, and you plant a plant. So plant is a verb as well, and it's implant, it means to put in, okay? Ooh, scary. All right. Uh, Ashwatha says, uh, there will be, uh, for mobile phones and credit cards, they will be replaced by artificial intelligence. Oh, yep, by online payments. Sorry, I read the end of Pachu's. Uh, Pachu says, as I said before, these items like mobile phones and credit cards will be replaced by artificial intelligence. Okay, Pachu, not bad, not bad. Iyad al-Bilal says, Maybe using smart SIM cards transplanted under our skin for multiple uses like gaining access to buildings and withdrawing cash from bank tellers might be a replacement in the future for today's mobile phones, credit cards. Uh, Iyad, good, use the question. So Iyad, use the question in your answer, but otherwise it's not a bad answer at all. So use the question uh, students yes there will be it's testing your future use of participle uh, for the future will okay so uh, undoubtedly with the rapid advancement of technology there will be differences in the useful objects of tomorrow as compared with today. Perhaps some form of a micro chip implanted under people's skin that can be used as a key to access a premises that out in a second to access a premises or withdraw cash from a machine or make a payment might not even have cash by that time all right so that is a good answer students there we go um, a premises is a location, so like a house or a yard or a school, that's all a premises. It's a location. It's a noun. All right, here we go. So repeat after me. Will there be changes in the future as well? Undoubtedly. Thank you for that satisfying times. Undoubtedly, with the rapid advancement of technology, there will be differences in the useful objects of tomorrow as compared with today. Perhaps some form of a microchip implanted under people's skin that can be used as a key to access a premises or make a payment. Iyad al-Bilal, thank you for that suggestion. Good work, students. Good work. Here we go with the next question. If I don't catch yours, don't give up. I try to catch different students' answers every time, okay? Shang Hung, I'm so happy I can rely on you for those spelling corrections every time. It's fantastic, and I mean that very wholeheartedly. So here we go. Um, next question. In what situations should people pay extra attention to make sure that they carry with them certain useful possessions? Ooh, okay. Heavy question. 
but a good one, and it's not that difficult if you really think about it. So in what situations, pay attention always to the start of questions, in what situations should people pay extra attention to make sure that they carry with them certain useful possessions? Jeannie Deborah says, if people travel around dangerous places such as Rome or Paris, I would like to say that they need to be careful because there are a lot of burglaries. Um, uh, Jan, they're called pickpockets, okay, pickpockets or thieves. Uh, burglary is when somebody breaks into a house or into a premises, okay? Um, so you're thinking of pickpocket or thief, okay? Not a burglary. Burglary is for banks and for houses. Okay. All right. But you says, well, people should pay a lot of attention to make sure that they carry certain useful items in situations like when there is an appointment for a job interview or when they travel abroad. Pachu, very good. Um, give me an example. Like, don't forget your toothbrush at home if you are going out of town, right, Pachu? All right. Uh, Amar says, when you go uh, shopping, <laughs> be sure to have enough money or a credit card with you so that you can bring home the item you wish to buy. Okay, those are some good answers. Uh, Yerfi Hun says, if they are in a hurry and they have somewhere to be on time, most people can easily uh, forget important things like keys to their car or their bus pass. Okay, uh, Gyurfi, I think you're off topic there. That's not really what the question is asking. Shubha says, in situations like when one is abroad, they should always carry a passport. Another situation could be when they're going to travel for, for a long time. Uh, to remember taking some medication. Yeah, Shubhad, that's very good. Okay, it's a great answer. All right. Zaid Nawafa says, oh, shopping is the uh, most frequent case where individuals have to pay attention to what they carry. Last week, uh, I faced some troubles paying at a gas station after filling up my car and realizing I didn't have my wallet with me. Boom, that is a beautiful answer. I love the example. Fantastic. Okay, that was really good, Zaid. Loved it. All right, Manjeet says, well, if they are traveling to some unknown place, then carrying a map for directions may be a good idea to stay safe and not get lost. When I was visiting Venice last June, this was definitely an important idea to keep in mind. And I say that very honestly, students. If you're ever in Venice, Italy, take a map with you if you don't have internet because you can get lost very easily. All right, so clearly many of you thought about the same idea. Uh, when people are going out shopping, they must pay careful attention to take money and or a credit card with them so they do not end up in an embarrassing situation at the checkout counter like what happened with me just last week at the gas station realizing that I did not have my wallet on me 
after filling up my car. Uh oh, another circumstance where a person must be very attentive to having some items with them is during travel, especially items like a passport. All right, so there we go. Um, read with me. So in what situations should people pay extra attention to make sure they carry with them certain useful possessions? Okay, here we go. When people are going out shopping, they must pay careful attention to take money and or a credit card with them so they do not end up in an embarrassing situation at the checkout counter. Like what happened with me just last week at the gas station, realizing that I did not have my wallet on me after filling up my car. Another circumstance where a person must be very attentive to having some items with them is during travel, especially items like a passport, okay? Uh, Shubha, good question. So Shubha is asking, when do I use this kind of um, word structure and or? Um, it's in situations, Shubha, where it's okay if you have both money and a credit card with you. It's probably a better idea to have money and a credit card just in case they don't accept a credit card but arguably it's enough to have one or the other. So Shubha, if A or B is okay, A and B together are maybe even better, then you can use and or in that situation. Very good question, okay? All right, students, again, notice the structure. Answer, when people are going out shopping, they must pay careful attention. Paraphrase, pay careful attention, extra attention, uh, money credit card, then explanation, do not end up in an embarrassing situation. So why? So that we don't embarrass ourselves. And example, smooth flowing, like what happened with me just last week at the gas station. Okay. Um, what may happen if they forget these objects? Okay. Yes, Drew, that's right. It means either of them is fine in the and or scenario. Okay. So next question, what may happen if they forget to carry these objects? So give me a nice full sentence answer for this one. So Hadi says, well, nothing too terrible. It's not the end of the world. Hadi, I would, I would say it like this to be more natural. Well, nothing too terrible. It's not the end of the world, but they may waste some time and money and get into an awkward situation as I had just mentioned. Okay, so that would be a little bit more natural if that's what you want to express. It's okay, just be natural with it, Hadi. Okay, all right, Pachu says, well, as I mentioned before, if these credit cards are forgotten while going shopping, people cannot buy those items and feel embarrassed. They might be disappointed um, due to not purchasing what they needed to. Uh, yeah, absolutely, okay? Uh, that's a good one. Uh, Saima Imran says, well, uh, that's again a very interesting question. As I told you about uh, what happened with me forgetting my card, um, there can be big trouble as there's not much time to correct my mistake and it's very embarrassing. Don't switch to your, Saima. Stay away from the word your, especially when you're talking about your experience. So my 
experience. Preeti says it's really an awkward situation. They feel embarrassed, maybe harassment, and also sometime they might need to cancel their trip if they don't have their passport. Yeah. Zaid says people will be in an embarrassing situation when they forget their money or mobile phone and they need to call someone uh, and ask them uh, for help when they are in a store or at the market. Zaid, very good. Notice my corrections. Uh, Shang Hung says if students attend the IELTS exam but forget to bring their passport, they may not be able to take the test, uh, just like what I've seen on the internet. And there's always students who forget their passport. Shang Hung, brilliant. I love that quick, clever brain of yours. So Shang Hung says, well, um, there could be some problems like a student who forgets to bring their passport to the IELTS exam will not be able to sit the test. They will receive a band score of zero and lose close to $300 US, not to mention the negative outcome on their travel and study plans. Yes, very true. So make sure that if you use your passport to register for the IELTS exam, make sure to bring it with you. Okay, that's very, very important. All right, fantastic. Now, notice how I didn't connect water bottle. We did use water bottle members, you remember, uh, for part two. For this last question, I could have used it, okay? I could have said, well, uh, as I mentioned in part two, if I forget my water bottle at home, then I end up creating more pollution, buying disposable water bottles, and I can get dehydrated, which could be a problem for my health. So that's where we could have made a connection to part two as well okay sidhu how can you enhance your ideas visualize picture what you're saying think about the most popular answer people would choose what nine out of ten people would choose to answer and practice of course sidhu practice will make perfect students here are some more part three questions for you for homework let's talk about personal items People at times attach special meanings to certain objects. Why is this? Can this be a negative? Where are common places for people to keep their personal items? Why is it common practice to put these items in such places? What can people do to make sure that they do not lose their personal belongings? Why is this important? I will leave these last set of questions for you, for homework to do over the next couple days, you can send them to me, your answers, by email. Record them in MP3 on your phone. Send them to my email address, adrian at aehelp.com, and I'll let you know what kind of a band score you could expect for your responses to those questions. That's it for this week's of live IELTS classes. Thank you so much, students, for watching. Thank you for your effort, for your responses. You have beautiful brains. The universe's most incredible supercomputers sit on top of your shoulders. Use them. Train them. Believe in yourself. We believe in you. Have a great rest of your weekend. We will see you on Tuesday. Much love to all of you. Bye for now.